crochet and today we will be learning how to make an awesome Halloween wreath. You really need no crochet skills to do this. However, I am going to show you how I'm going to show you two different um, wreaths that you can do. One is for um, if you don't have any crochet skills and one is for if you want to do everything crochet. Um, so yeah, so um, I have previous videos on how to do the spider web that is in the middle of this wreath. I also have videos on how to do the spider that is on this wreath, okay? So um, I'm going to put a link under this on my YouTube um, for you to find the spider web and the spiders. And I will also put a link um, on my Facebook. Um, so I am doing Facebook Live right now, and then I will later upload this. Please like, share, and subscribe if you are on YouTube and hit that little bell. If you're on Facebook, please like and share. And also, get um, there's a little button that you can push on this video to give you notifications of when I have other live videos. So if you want to press that, you can. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna, I know people hate it when you talk that much at the beginning of videos, but unfortunately on this one, I have to tell you what we're doing. So I am gonna talk a tiny bit. Um, you are gonna need, um, if you want to use the orange, I use two different oranges for this. This darker or brighter orange is a flame orange. It's called Flame, and it's by Red Heart Super Saver. And this is just actually orange, and it is also by Red Heart Super Saver. Um, and the black is actually Mainstays from Walmart. Um, if you're going to be doing the crochet version, you still need those colors, or either you can just use orange or just use the flame color. But if you're going to be doing the crochet version, you are gonna need a 6.5 millimeter hook, a 5.5 millimeter hook, and a 4.5 millimeter hook, okay? Now, the 4.5 is a G, the 6.5 is a K, and the 5.5 is a M, <laughs> okay? I mean, no, I'm sorry. I don't know what, that's not really saying. Anyways, that one doesn't have a number. So, I mean a letter. Anywho, those are the numbers for the crochet noodles that you're gonna need, um, I mean the hooks. Also, if you're doing the non-crochet version, I got all these materials at Dollar Tree for a dollar. This is the spider to go in the middle of your spider web. These are the flowers that you can substitute instead of doing the crochet flowers. Again, these were a dollar a bunch. And you really could only, you could use one, you could use two. And they also come with these little spiders that you can add on to this wreath, okay? So this is what I got, um, and then it's just a dollar at Dollar Tree. I also got some dollar stones um, at Dollar Tree. You know how they come in a little bag of stones? Um, you can also use rhinestones, you can use whatever you want, but I put these in the middle of my black water lilies, um, and they look really cool on the front door when the sun hits them. So remember, it's just these little stones, and again, those were also a dollar. So just trying to keep it cheap here, but like I said, that's for the non-crochet version. I'm going to teach you how to do both ways here today. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you how to do... Um, and also, you're going to need a metal wreath. Um, if you want to get a foam one, you can. If you want to, I'm just showing you what I got. This is a 20 inch wire wreath form. I got it at Walmart. It was $3.47. So I thought that wasn't too bad. I'm going to show you how to do a wreath cover with crochet. But what you can also do is you can just wrap this with yarn. It, it'll take you a while. Really and honestly though, it's not gonna take you that less time to do that than it would to crochet it. So if you're not a crocheter and you wanna do this wreath, you can simply wrap this metal um, wreath here with yarn. You're just simply going around and around and around and around and filling it with your orange yarn. Okay, um, on my wreath, um, I'm gonna show you the back of it. The back of it, it shows what I'm about to show you, and that's how to do a wreath cover. As you can see, you can see where I've pulled the poofs through and everything, but you're not gonna see the back because this is a wreath. Um, so yeah, so um, let's get started. I'm gonna show you how to do the wreath cover. So we're gonna move my wreath here, my Halloween wreath, 
and we're going to bring up our metal our metal wreath thing here and so again if you're not a crocheter and you don't want to do this or even if you are and you just want to wrap it you can I found with this that it was easier to do um, a crochet cover for it okay and this is what it looks like it almost looks like a scarf but I'm going to show you how to get started with that okay so what you would do to make your wreath cover sorry camera is getting a little wonky there you're going to do a slip knot and you're going to chain 24. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I am using the 6.5 millimeter hook. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24, okay? So you've chained 24, and this is the length, okay? This is what's going to wrap around your wire wreath, okay? So I did it this big, and I'll show you why. Um, but when you pull it around when you're done it fits perfectly, but this is what's going to go around your wreath So I did 24 and so after you chain 24 you're going to Do double crochets all the way across. I'm going to go right into my next Not this one Not where my loop is coming out, but in my next one. I'm going to do a double crochet And I'm going to go all the way down doing double crochets, just like this. Sorry about the movement of the camera, just was having to show stuff, so. Anyways, yeah, we're going all the way down with these double crochets, and I'm just gonna show you quickly how to go down. And I have a little black kitten attacking my yarn. And uh, I know this is kind of boring to watch, but um, I just really wanted you to get an idea of how to make this wreath cover um, so, yeah. Hold on. the cat's trying to destroy the yarn, so I had to get it. <laughs> So yeah, just going all the way down here. And this is a perfect thing to do while you're watching TV. Um, also, if you want to wrap the wreath, just sit down and watch your favorite show. And because um, it's really easy to do, it's not complicated. You don't have to concentrate too hard. So after you go all the way down with your double crochets, okay, looks like this, you're going to simply turn your work, you're going to chain up three, and then you're going to go into the next, after you've turned your work, not this one, because this chain of three counts as your double crochet right above here. So you're going to go right into the next stitch and do a double crochet. And then you would keep doing that all the way down. And what you're basically going to need is you're going to need 24 across. So you start with a chain of 24 and you're going to need around 70 in length, okay? So that's what you're going to do. You're just going to keep going back and forth and back and forth doing just what I just showed you how to do. Okay. And then when you get done, it's going to look like this. 
Um, and, and that's just basically, it looks like kind of like a long scarf. Um, and so I'm going to try to, uh, raise up my camera a little bit because I need to show you how to wrap it around, um, wrap it around the wreath. Okay. So I'm going to just be moving my camera a little bit. Sorry if I'm making you dizzy. Okay, so we've got our wreath now, and we've got the cover, and what we're going to do is we're going to just lay this over like this. Let's go ahead and take this tag off. <laughs> I wanted to show you all the how big it was, so I kept the tag on. Let's take the tag off, and you're just going to, goodness gracious. Um, you're just going to lay it over. I don't know if you can see, but I've just kind of laid it over the top and then I'm going to pull as I go down. Okay. And so then it starts to look like this and then you just want to get it all even. Okay, so let's go back down with the camera here. <laughs> so you're just going to keep pulling until you get it right here. Okay. Just like that. Pull it till you get it the way you want it. And then right here, as the, and this is why you, you want it to be a little tight. So I only did, I think it was like 70 or 71. You're gonna find exactly what you need for your wreath. Um, and then when you get it down here, down here, you're going to slip stitch, um, I mean not slip stitch. You're going to use some of your orange yarn and your darning needle and you're going to close this up, okay? And you would just simply sew it together to close it up all around, okay? All around the front and the back, okay? And then as you do that, this is going to start fitting perfectly around, okay? And as you can see, um, that's what it looks like, okay? And now it's ready for our little poofs, the little poofs that we're gonna do, okay? Um, so that's what I'm gonna show you how to do next. There are a ton of videos on how to do these little poofs, um, but I'm just gonna show you the way that I do it because hey, maybe it'll be helpful. Okay, so let's, we're gonna lower the camera back down again. <laughs> ah, down, down we go. And now we're going to work on how to make um, sorry guys about the camera okay so now we're going to do the little poofs okay and um, again you do not need to know how to crochet to do this I'm going to show you two ways I'm going to show you two ways how um, to do it uh, you can use a piece of cardboard like you see in front of me. It's just a square piece of cardboard. Um, and I would take a pin and I would make kind of like a horseshoe type thing here, except really straight. So I would just do like this, go like that and go down just like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just to uh, wrap your yarn around to make the poofs. And then I'm gonna use these scissors here because I uh, can't find my big ones. And then you would just cut this out. And uh, you can use this, just like this. So I'm just gonna cut where I've, I've uh, marked here. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect, just like that. Okay, so then what I would do is I would take my orange yarn, okay, I'm oh, so sorry, <laughs> the cat took off with my yarn, so. Sorry about that. I think I'm gonna actually have to cut it because uh, he really took off with it. 
He's having a heyday. We're just going to give him some. So I'm just going to cut it off and he can have something to play with. Okay. So, um, to do this, what you would do is, is you would take your little piece of cardboard here and you would wrap, you would take the yarn, you would hold it just like this and you would wrap it around 120 times. So we did two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. nine, ten, eleven, <laughs> twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, nineteen, twenty, and basically you understand you're going to go 120. So I'm just going to go really fast to get it around. And I really would rather use my hands, but I know some of you wouldn't, so. Um. Um. But basically, yeah, you would just keep wrapping it around until you got to 120. Um, and as you can see, um, the cardboard is going to turn a little bit. It's going to, you know, that's okay. That's what it's going to do. Because as you do the yarn, no matter how loose you do it, um, it will start to tighten. Um, and so you would just keep going. And then um, I'm not going to do 120 for the camera. Um, I will try to do it on my hand in just a minute to show you. But basically, you would go around 120 times. You would cut off your yarn. You would cut another piece. Okay. And then you would take this piece. And you would go through this end here of the cardboard. You would go through the end right here. And then you would go through this open spot right here, okay? And then you would tie it right here in the middle. And I usually do it about four times. Two, three, and four. Okay? And while it's still on the cardboard, you can take your scissors. And mine got a little wonky because I'm doing it on camera. <laughs> For some reason, it didn't work out. And then you'll cut down the side here. And uh, using some better scissors than mine would help, but I can't find mine. So, um, but yeah, my craft scissors would be really nice right about now. But yeah, you just cut along the ends on both sides, leaving your two little scraggly pieces right here. And then you just cut along the edges. So, I thought I was prepared and I was not. Okay. <laughs> okay. So then after you do that, you can pull it out and shake out your, your little poof thing here. And I don't care how you do this unless maybe you buy one of those things from like Hobby Lobby that can make... Um, perfect poofs but when you get it undone it's gonna look funky you know it's just not gonna look right and the way I do this to trim up my poofs is I hold the two pieces here that I tied on I hold them together and then I just simply pull down with my hand like this and then I'll usually have a bag or a box of some kind um, and then I will start um, trimming and I just take the portions that are above here and then I start trimming all the way around to make it right. And um, uh, these scissors are not going to work. I really should have my other scissors. But you basically get the gist of it. 
you would just keep cutting all the way around um, until it became flat. I really want to show it to you. I'm just going to try to trim a little bit here. Like I said, make sure you have something, a t-shirt, a box, a bag, something to hold these in, or they do make a huge mess. Um, when I first started doing them years ago, I did it on my bed one time and it was just crazy. But anyways, as you cut around and if you have good scissors that it becomes really flat um, and uh, would look much better. And uh, actually, my husband's here. I'm going to see if he'll get them for me. Hey, babe. I don't think he can hear me. Hey, babe. Can you get my white crafting scissors? He heard me. Because <laughs> I really want to show y'all how to do this. And uh, these scissors are not cutting it. <laughs> these are perfect for what I'm crocheting, but not for when I'm doing this. So, okay, here's my good crafting scissors. And so this is how it would normally be. So, yeah. So this is how you would want to cut it right here at the top. And you would just keep going around. I'm using my hand as a guide. Um, and it's going to help trim everything down. Um, and yes, you are wasting a lot of yarn, but they are so cool looking. Um, but you really have to trim it down quite a bit to get the poof look that you need for this. Okay. So I'm just going, using my hand as a guide, going all around my hand. And then when you shake it out, okay, then you've got a puff. And as you can tell, it still needs to be trimmed even more. So now what I would do is I would do my hand again and I would go up a little bit and then I would trim some more. Like I said, the more you trim, the more poofier it looks. And the more times that you go around your hand or your piece of cardboard, for instance, I said to do 100, 120, that's gonna make a much bigger poof. I think I only did like 50 for this one. Um, just for the sake of the video. Um, but yeah, for the actual wreath, you want to go around 120 times and it will be much bigger. And you would still need to cut off though with your hand, just like I'm showing you how to do it here. Okay. And so then again, you shake it out and you go like this and look, you got a cute little poof. You can cut around the edges here. Really for this wreath though, I kind of liked for it to look a little bit uh, funky on the edges because when you go against the wreath, when you go against the wreath, look, it's gonna be laying flat. So it really doesn't matter if you've got a little funky edges around the side, okay? So that's how you do a poof. Um, and again, the way that you can do it with your hand, if you don't wanna use cardboard and you just wanna keep it simple, you would just use your hand to wrap it, see? And you would just go round and round and round and round again. You'll need 120. And you would just keep going around and around and around and around and around. And it does get tight and it's hard to move around. But this is my favorite way to do it because I just hate using other stuff. And I'm just sitting in front of the TV and I'm making a ton of these. So I'm just going around and around and around with my hand. And then the same thing, I would cut off. I would cut a little piece. I would, and once you've got 120 of these on your hand, um, turns, it is hard to get through, but I just make it work. I go right through the middle of my four fingers here on the top, excluding my thumb, and I push it through, and then I go out the other side, and I pull it through here, and then I go between these two fingers, and I just pull it through, and again, I would tie it um, four times. And I would start with one on my hand, and then I would pull off my fingers, and then I would just do one, two, three, four, five, and four. I just use four because that's what works best for me. They never come undone. And then again, the same thing like we did on the other one um, with the cardboard. You would just go around the edges and cut on that side. 
I would go to my other side, go around and cut, make sure I get any scragglers. Then I would just do like this, and even though it's very small, and then I would pull up and do the same thing. Okay, just the same thing. So that's how you do those push. You can use your hand, you can use a piece of cardboard, you can go to Hobby Lobby um, or Michael's and find the perfect poof makers. They actually make those. I don't have one, don't want one, but hey, if you want them to be perfect, you're more than welcome to get them. So that's how we did the puffs that go around the wreath, okay? Now I'm gonna show you how to do the flowers. The flowers on this are black. They are black water lilies, um, but I am going to use blue because black does not show up on a video. It can barely show up when you're looking at it to crochet. <laughs> so if you know anything about crochet, you know it's a pain. However, if you're not wanting, if you don't know how to crochet and you're just wanting to do this wreath without crochet, remember you do not have to do these flowers. You can do these right here that you can get from Dollar Tree for a dollar, okay? Another thing, if you are using those or even these, you may need a hot glue gun because to put these on the wreath, and I'll talk about this again in a little bit, you can either hot glue the flowers onto the orange puffs or you can tie them on, okay? But let's get to how to make these beautiful 3D water lilies, okay? So for our first water lily, it's the large one on the wreath. If you noticed before, there are three sizes on the wreath. There is a, a large, a medium, and a small flower on this wreath. And I'm gonna show you how to do all three of these real quick, okay? But for the large one, you are going to need the 6.5 millimeter hook. And again, you will need black yarn. I'm using blue only for the video. So let's do a slip stitch. I mean a um, slip knot. <laughs> and now we're going to chain up four. One, two, three, and four. And then you're going to slip stitch into the first chain from the hook. In the middle of this, chain that we just did, this chain of four, we're going to do 10 single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, okay? Now you're going to slip stitch into the first uh, first chain we did, I mean, uh, first single crochet that we did, and that's right here, okay? So I'm just going to put my hook right there, and we're gonna slip stitch to pull that together, and I'll pull the middle a little bit, and then we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. And then we're going to single crochet where we just slip stitched, right there at the bottom there, okay? And that's what it looks like right there. Then we're going to skip our next stitch, go into the next one after that, do a single crochet, chain up five, and do another single crochet. And you're gonna do that all the way around. So again, we're gonna skip our next stitch we're going to go into the next one do a single crochet chain five and single crochet right back into that same spot skip our next one go into the next single crochet chain up five and single crochet right back into that same spot and again skip your next one go into the next single crochet, chain up five, and then single crochet. Now we've got five of these chain of fives, one, two, three, four, five, that's exactly what you need. Now we're going to skip this last one, and right to where we first began, we're going to do a slip stitch right here, right there where we first started, we're going to do a slip stitch, okay? Now. We're going to be working in these chains of five to make our petals, okay? 
So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go right into this first chain of five here and we're going to do a single crochet. Okay. Then we're going to do a half double crochet. Then we're going to do three double crochets. Okay. Then you're going to chain two and we're going to mirror that on the other side. So we're going to do three double crochets. And there's three. A half double crochet and a single crochet. Okay. And then we're going to go right into our next chain of five and we're going to do a single crochet, a half double crochet, and three double crochets. One, two, and three. Then we're going to chain two and mirror the other side again. So we're going to do three double crochets. A half double crochet and a single crochet. Okay? And as you can see, our petals are starting to form. So we're just going to keep on. I'm going to keep showing you how to do this in each chain of five. So we're going to go to our next, do a single crochet, half double crochet, three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, half double crochet and a single crochet okay if you don't know how to do these stitches I do have a beginners video so in our next stitch we're going to do a single crochet again half double crochet three double crochets chain two and then again mirror the other side so three double crochets a half double crochet and then a single crochet and now we're on our last one in each one of these you are going to have five petals so we're going to go to our last one here and I'm going to show you how to tie it in here. Single crochet, half double crochet, three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets again, half double crochet and a single crochet okay so that's what it looks like and then to um, finish this first uh, part of our flower off we're going to go right here into the beginning where we first started and we're going to do a slip stitch okay and that's what it looks like that's what our first portion looks like now to make the medium size flower for this wreath, you're going to do this exact pattern that we just did, but you're going to use a 4.5 millimeter hook, which is a G, okay? So that's what you're gonna use. And, um, and then you'll just use that smaller hook. It'll make the flower a little bit smaller, but that's what you'll use for our medium size. But we're going to keep going, and we're going to show. I'm going to show you how to do um, the wa the two tier water lily. Okay. So now what you would do is you would turn your work over. 
to turn your work over. And now we're going to be working in these little holes that are right underneath our petals, okay? And they're all along here. One's right there, right there, right there. And we're going to be working right into those, okay? So we're going to go right into here, pull our yarn through, and do a slip stitch, okay? Then we're going, I'm going to fold this petal down, and I'm going to chain up seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Then I'm going to go right back into that same place we started in, that same little hole right there, and do a single crochet, okay? So then I'm going to go find my next little hole right under my petal, which is right here. If you can't find that for whatever reason, if you work a lot tighter than me or you're using a smaller hook, it really doesn't matter. Just go somewhere right below here where your petal is. But I find that these holes right here work perfectly and they're actually where we skipped from the beginning, okay? So now we're going to pull our yarn through, do a slip stitch right through there, chain seven, four, five, six, and seven, do a single crochet, then we're gonna go right into our next little hole right here, do a slip stitch, chain up seven, okay, then go right back in for a single crochet, Okay, and then I'm looking for my hole again right under there. And I'm going to pull through for a slip stitch, chain up seven. And go right back in that same spot for single crochet. And for the sake of this video, I'm just going to go ahead and snip this off so it's not in our way. And now I'm finding my, my last hole right here, right under my petal there. And I'm gonna do a slip stitch, chain up seven. And go right back in for a single crochet. Okay? Now what I wanna do is I wanna get right back over here where we first started. So I'm gonna go right back where we first started and I'm going to do a slip stitch right there where we first started, okay? Now, that is what it looks like. So on the back now, we have one, two, three, four, five um, starts for our petals here, okay? And we're gonna be doing very similar to our, our first, uh, first flower on the top there. Um, we're going to be working right into these chain of seven. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go right through here, pull up my yarn, and do a single crochet. Okay, then I'm going to go right back in there and I'm going to do a half double crochet. Then I'm going to go right back around there and do three double crochets. One, two, and three. Okay, now what I'm going to do is work two treble crochets. I have a video on trebles if you don't know how to do them, but I'm going to go over really quick, okay? So to do a treble, I'm going to wrap my hook around, wrap my yarn around my hook twice, go around that there, pull through, go through twice, go through two, go through two, okay? So I'm going to do that one more time and to work another treble, through two, go through two, go through two, okay? Now I'm going to chain two and I'm gonna mirror the other side. So I'm gonna work two trebles. There's one. There's two. And then I'm going to do three double crochets. One, two, and three. Then I'm going to do a half double crochet and a single crochet. Now if you got lost there, no worries. I'm gonna do it a couple more times for you like I always do. But just to show you what it looks like, this is what we're working with right here. And you see, this is what makes it 3D. This first flower that we did is going to sit on top of what we're doing on the back now. Okay, so that's what it looks like. So now we're gonna move on and we're gonna to go to our next chain of seven. 
We're going to go right in there and we're going to work a single crochet. We're going to work a half double crochet. We're going to do three double crochets. One, two, and three. Okay. Now we're going to do two treble crochets. I'm wrapping around my hook twice. I'm going to pull up my yarn. Yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. Okay, and again, wrapping around my hook twice, going through, pulling up my yarn, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. Then I'm going to chain two, and I'm going to mirror the other side again. So I'm going to go around twice for a treble, go through two, go through two, go through two, and another treble. Then I'm going to do three double crochets. Then I'm going to do a half double crochet. And then I'm going to do a single crochet, okay? Now, if you've got this already, you can just move ahead and keep going. Or you can listen to me yap, or I'm gonna just keep doing these last three so that we know exactly how to do them. It is a little bit confusing and it's a lot of stitches to work in one little petal here, but they are beautiful, okay? So again, we're gonna to go to our next one. We're gonna do a single crochet, a half double crochet, three double crochets, okay? Then we're going to work two trebles, then we're going to chain two, we're going to do that on the other side. So there's one treble, there's two, then we're going to work our three double crochets. One, two, and three. And then our half double crochet. And you can move these up as you need to, if you need to. And our single crochet, okay? And so we're gonna go right into our next one. We're gonna do the same thing. We're going to work a single crochet, a half double crochet, three double crochets, one, two, and three. Then we're gonna work two trebles, one and two. Then chain two and work two more trebles. Then three double crochets. Then a half double crochet and a single crochet, okay? And now we're on our last one. So let's go over this one more time. I'm gonna try to go a little bit slower, make sure I'm actually staying in camera. Having a hard camera time today. I appreciate you guys' patience. Okay, so I'm gonna go right into this next one and I'm gonna do a single crochet. So I'm gonna go a little bit slower. So we started with our single crochet. Now we're gonna do a half double crochet. That's where we yarn over, we pull through, and we go through all three. Then we're going to do three double crochets. Yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, and another one, and then another one. And that's three double crochets. Then we're going to do two treble crochets. Okay. Then we're going to chain two, one and two. And we're going to do two more treble crochets.
then three double crochets. A half double crochet and a single crochet okay and now all we're going to do to finish this off is I'm going to go right back to where I first started and do a slip stitch now if you're wanting to sew these onto your wreath instead of hot gluing them um, I actually ended up kind of doing a little bit of both sewing and hot gluing um, I did find that the hot gluing was a lot easier um, but if you are going to sew on then you need to leave enough room here to sew that okay and then you would just tie it off and then this is what it looks like okay. put it into place here but it's really a beautiful um, water lily flower okay and on each side you have five petals now what I did for my wreath um, as I showed you before I took one of my um, little uh, gemstone things here that I bought from Dollar Tree and I super glued it right there in the middle and it just looks so pretty just like that um, and in it came with these like uh, it's not very clear but in it were some clear ones that look more glass like and you can use those as well but remember I use black not blue okay so that's what that large flower looks like and I showed you what you needed to do for your middle one your middle flower and now I'm going to show you how to make the smallest flower on the wreath using a 4.5 millimeter hook. And yes, you would normally use um, black, but again, I'm going to use blue because you cannot see black in a video. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to do the smallest flower on the wreath. And to do that, you're going to do a slip knot. You're going to chain up four. You're going to slip stitch into the first chain from your hook and it's going to be a little weird using such a a thicker yarn with such a small hook but it makes a beautiful flower okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to chain um, four one two three and four and then we're going to do three treble crochets okay there's one There's two, and there is three. Okay, that's what it looks like. And then you're going to go right back into the middle of your circle, and you're going to do a single crochet to hold your petal down. And that is our first petal for our small flower. As I'm working around, I'm just working in my little scraggly piece as I go. Okay, so now that I've single crocheted, I'm going to chain up four again, and again, I'm going to do three treble crochets there's one there's two there's three and again I'm going to single crochet right there in the middle of my circle okay and there's our second petal and we need five so I'm going to chain up four I'm going to do three treble crochets one and because it is um, a smaller hook sometimes it will get stuck but it'll work out okay okay there's two and three And then I'm going to go right back in the middle and do a single crochet. Okay. So I'm going to keep moving these over because it is a small place to work into and we do need five. So I've just done my single crochet. So I'm going to chain up four again. One, two, three, and four. And then we're going to do three treble crochets. One, two, and three. And then back into the center for a single crochet and now one more time chain up four do 
three more treble crochets. And then to finish it off, we do a single crochet right into the middle there. And again, if you're wanting to sew these on, leave a lot of room there. Just tie this in here to pull it off at the end. Okay, and you've got a pretty little flower. Then I take my middle piece. I've worked it all the way around, so there's no need to keep it. I can cut that off without tying it in. I mean, I'm um, sewing it in because I worked it around. Okay, and that's what our small little flower looks like. And for that, again, I used um, the same size. Um, I just thought it looked cool to put it in there. And I just put that right there in the middle. And again, it was black, and they're black, okay? So now you know how to do all the size flowers for the wreath. Um, and let's see, is there anything else? I taught you how to do the poof. I showed you how to do the wreath cover. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you real quick how you would put this all together, okay? If you are crocheting, I'm gonna have to move the camera again. Sorry guys. Get ready to be dizzy. This thing does not wanna move. That little thing is like wonky. Okay, so um, if you're crocheting your wreath, okay, if you're crocheting it and you've just learned how to do the flowers, you've watched my video on how to do the spider web, you know how to do the spiders, okay? What I did was, is I tied my puffs in. I did one, two, right here, and then I did two here, okay? Now, whether you're doing the crochet wreath or not, um, this is what you're gonna wanna do, okay? So if you turn it over, you can see here where I've tied these in and then I've just cut them. Um, because it is a wreath and it's going against a door, I did not want to take the time to sew all of those in. But if you're um, more OCD than me, then <laughs> you're more than welcome to do so. But you can see where I've tied those in. So I've literally just taken those two scraggly pieces that are left. So like when I showed you how to do these, this was left over. I just pulled those through here um, our wreath cover and then I tied them on the back okay and then I just cut them off and then I did two 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 and two all the way around to get the width that I got okay to do the spider web when you watch my spider web video you're going to see that I've left um, some ends for you to tie in and this is where you would tie them in at you just take a darning needle put them through and then you would just um, bring them up here, pull through, and knot off, and pull it how you want it. A spider web, guys, is not perfect, so I did not leave mine totally perfect, um, but you can if you want. I, I wanted mine a little to the side and a little different, so that's what I did for mine, okay? Now, if you do not want to crochet your spider wreath, because I did say that you could do this and not know how to crochet, you can simply take yarn and just you know, cut the pieces that you want, tie them over here, tie them over here, tie them over here, and then tie in between, okay, to make your spider web. So you can do that um, with, with no crochet experience whatsoever, okay? And also, to place the flowers for the non-crochet wreath, what you would do is, is you would take your bunch of flowers that you've got from Dollar Tree or wherever you wanna get them, um, and then you would just cut, I just use my, my craft scissors to do that, that's a big no-no. And then you would place them just like I placed my crochet ones. Um, and then you could still put the little thing in the middle if you wanted, or you could leave it alone. And you would just hot glue them all the way around, just where I have mine placed. But you would use these fake flowers so you wouldn't have to crochet them. In these flowers came these tiny little spiders, okay? You can hot glue those onto here or onto here. And then I found this huge spider and that would be placed right in the middle and you can hot glue that as well or you can tie it down with your yarn. Either way you do it, it's gonna come out beautiful. Um, I'm actually gonna use these and I'm going to make a wreath for my daughter's dorm room door. 
um, and hopefully she'll be excited because she wanted to steal this one. <laughs> but I knew I was going to need it for my video, so I wouldn't let her have it yet. But I'm actually going to make one because I think she's going to love this big fake spider. And I'm going to put it right in the middle. Okay. So I myself am going to do a non-crochet version of this as well. So I hope all of this was uh, easy to understand beside all the crazy camera movement. Again, I'm so sorry about that. Um, but if you need anything or you need any help or you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. And I've been getting some wonderful pictures from subscribers and Facebook viewers of what they're getting done. And I just love it. So once you get this done, or if you make something totally different, but you use some of my um, patterns, please show me because I, I really love to see those. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to go put this back on my front door because we love it here. And um, thanks for watching and happy crocheting, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.